Welcome back everyone to another episode of Civil Textures. my name is Ferdi and in today's tutorial we're going to be looking at attenuation storage in Flow Causeway. Now if you're new to the channel consider subscribing as I upload weekly contents for civil engineering topics. Now it's not the first time that we struggle deciding on which manhole we're going to put our storage. In addition I will show you a new way of doing your storage. I stumbled actually upon uh, that way in a webinar that they were doing in Flow. So without further ado, let's begin. For simplicity, I've prepared this AutoCAD file just to, to go through some scenarios. Now, the typical scenario is where you have an inlet, goes through a tank and goes out. Now, what you, if we're going to design the storage in the classic way, then we would like to take our storage in the middle. Now, if we have taken our storage to be here, then there is this length of pipe that how much are we going to define it are we going to define it the same dimension as this pipe that will have to travel so it will be like another how many meters let's go have a look so it will be another 20 meters in length of traveling water but if we specify the storage to be in the middle between the inlet and outlet and that's our storage how we define it in our plan then it will be traveling equal distance into storage filling up and then equally going out now that's what I believe in my opinion is the best way. If you have any different thoughts, leave it in the comments below so we can discuss. Since we have the coordinates of the inlet and outlet, all we have to do is find the coordinates of the middle of the pipe and define it as storage. Now I've taken the liberty to prepare this in flow. And as you can see here, we've got S1, S2, then between S2 and flow control, we took the middle point as a storage and then the outfall. Now to define your storage as shown in the basic tutorial flow, check the video up all we have to do is go to storage then go to node specify the name of the node that we, we want the storage in we named the storage so and then the structure it will be a depth area infiltration area unless you have something different if it's a cellular tank use depth infiltration area now there are other ones that i will cover in future tutorials safety factor you can get it from the suds manual and porosity for cellular crates is usually 0.9 to 0.95 now we assume that the depth of the tank is one so depth is we start from zero not from one and then the area of the tank is let's see so 300 so we type 300 because at level zero we have an area of 300 now when we reach at height of one the area is still 300 now if we leave it as zero we'll create a triangle because 300 and here the area is zero if we change the area to 100 you can see it that's 100 and then goes to 300 so if we keep it 300 it will create a kind of upside down pie now to close your tank all you have to do is add one meter point zero one and then area of zero and as you can see close your tank now the green line is your cover level which picks up from the node here as you can see so cover level 99.9 .9, depth 1.738 so as you can see here here's our two meters here's our zero and here should be our 1.738 bang on now if we click on else and goes green means we've done everything correctly and if we go view it in 3d if we go view display storage structures you can see that that's our storage that's how we present it now personally i never liked this because it doesn't feel like a true representation of what's happening so i always struggled accepting this let's say so let's look at our other scenarios our other scenarios is exactly the same one but we're gonna do it slightly differently now the tank is 50 meters and we know the insert point that the pipe goes in and the outlet so we create two junctions or dummy manholes as some people say and let's go do it now so if we go to our nodes and let's say storage is in the middle so it's on let's say area 20 so what we do is insert a new row and insert a new row here and what i'm gonna do is name it dummy one and dummy two now the coordinates it will be 15 0 and here will be 25 0 and as you can see created them here now i don't need the storage anymore so what i would do is in links 
I would just say S2 to D1 and then inserting your row D1 to D2 and then from D2 to flow control. The storage will not be connected but it will be shown. We can remove it for this tutorial so we can see show you. So let's delete our storage from here and delete it from here. As you can see here, we created D1 and D2. The next step is to go define D1 and D2. So if we go to nodes and then we click on the extend, node type, it's a junction and the same for D2. Now, the next thing we wanna do is define a link type. So if we go to link types, then go to name and let's name one storage. And what you want to do is it's a rectangular. The height is we're going to leave it as it is. Auto increment, just type 50, preferred cover. The tank attenuation tanks usually require a 0.8 cover. It varies from manufacturer. Gradient 500. Velocity, let's keep it default for now, but you can specify the manning, which is I think is 0.03. Now, the diameter would be the width of the tank. Now, we specified it as 15. So, we go 15. And then the height is 1000, which is 1 meter. If you can see here, it went green. And all we have to do is go to our links, go to D1 to D2, click plus, and then from the link type, specify storage. And then we go to d2 which is really important is to change from link type default to circular the reason being is the default means it follows the previous pipe uh, type so if the previous pipe type was circular it will continue circular if the previous type was in this occasion storage then it will follow storage as you can see here this is our storage representation and if we left it as default you can see it follows through but once we click on circular it stops it now what did we achieve with this one let's go to 3d to have a look as you can see we achieved wait let's show the ground as well and let's show a grid as you can see here we created a huge pipe system now it's not closed because we specify rectangular, but if we specify closed rectangular and go to 3D, you can see our tank is closed now. And all we have to do is set up our input point in the tank and the output, and we have our storage. Now, this is, I hope this was straightforward. Now, let's move to our next example. So as you can see here, uh, we will have the one, two, three, four dummy. So basically we have the insertion, the outlet. Then we, if you take an imaginary line from the outlet all the way back to the end of the tank, we have the fourth one, which is our connection point of the inlet with the tank's line. So basically imagine we're taking this as the pipeline and that's the width 15 then all you have to do is just decide where is it connecting because here we are adding the junction for the reason is so our pipe can change in dimensions now i would advise to keep this pipe small as well the reason being is this if we increase this pipe as well to match the tank then what would happen is we would have kind of double storage if that makes sense because we already have increased this width and if we increase this pipe right there then we'll increase this width and then we have this one so by adding a junction there there and there we're splitting the attenuation into two pieces and i think that's just a graphical misrepresentation however that's how i would model a l-shaped tank actually an l-shaped network through a tank so we go one direction we leave the other now if we want to add another inlet all we have to do is just add our manhole and then connect here normally so all we have to do in our network is go where d2 is insert a new row and all we have to do is just east things will remain 10 and then we'll go 45 and then all we have to do is just give it another name, S2, 
let's give it an area and then cover low and all we have to do is just go to manhole type manhole just so we won't follow the junction the default from d1 and then we need a reference link so from where d2 is we're just gonna add s2 to d2 and then if we go to 3d view you can see it connected now they're misshaped slightly because we have a junction here so it could still be a different level uh, where it comes in and a different level when it leaves that so all you have to do is just go to your links and fix it so a few moments later now it might be slightly up higher the reason is because our levels at the junctures vary so we have to make sure they're aligned so at d1 we're 98.406 so we just leave it 98.406 here as well and then at d3 98.144 this the d2 to d3 needs to be at 98.144 but however d2 is 97.659 so we change this one to 96 97.659 and then we go to d3 to no sorry 97.628 and then d3 97 6 to 8 and this should have fixed the problem a nice t-shaped tank so we have one two and we're outlet now if you want to create an l shape as per the last design all we have to do is just in extend this one and go this one so if we go to let's use this example and create a t-shaped tank so all we have to do is increase where d1 is so let's say s1 is easting so let's say a 40 away and let's say d1 would be the same so 30 let's say for example but when from the links d1 to d3 then we have to change it to storage type and then voila you've got your t-shirt well not quite exact let's say this length was smaller then all you have to do is just create a new storage type let's say storage one and all we have to do is go to auto increments 50 prefer cover 0.8 slope 500 and then diameter let's say five meters and then the height close rectangular and the height is one meter and if we go to links change the d1 to s3 to storage one and if we go to 3d view you can see the storage being reduced and we just have to fix our levels at the junction that they're connecting to so they can align properly basically what we're telling the system is that it's a small pipe then it goes to a massive rectangular pipe because you can think attenuation as this so the water flows and then finds its way out through this pipe this pipe right here now when you're running your network analysis if you come into some trouble regarding the mass imbalance then drop me a comment in the link below so i can let you know what to do so i hope you find this video useful and now you have a better understanding on how to design your storage inflow share it with your colleagues so we can get the channel growing and don't forget to like and subscribe that it will help me a lot in the long run so i can bring more content to you guys i'd like to thank causeway for allowing us to use the license to bring this video to you guys and see you next time stay safe